Okay, and welcome back. Now that we've looked at histograms, let's look at another way that we can organize numerical data in a way to look at how it's distributed and um, which categories seem to be occurring the most often, etc. Um, this area is called a stem plot, or this type of graph is called a stem plot. <coughs> One of the downsides that we j of what we just did in a frequency distribution table in a histogram is while it gives a good visual distribution of the data, the original data is really unrecoverable. In other words, once it goes into its class, we don't know whether if it went into the 1500 to 1600 category, whether it was closer to 1500 or closer to 1600. Um, the original data gets kind of lost. Uh, with a stem plot, we can see both the distribution of the data and we're able to recover the individual pieces of data at the same time. In a stem plot, we have two parts. One part is called the leaf, and the leaf is usually on, or is usually the last digit of the number, where the stem is usually the first few digits of a number. <coughs> Steps, number one, we're gonna create two columns, on the left side for stems and on the right side for leaves. Second, we're gonna list each stem as it occurs in the data set in numerical order. And then we're gonna go through and systematically uh, put each le leaf next to its stem. Usually at the end, what we will also do is to put the leaves into numerical order. If we do that, we've really created an ordered stem and leaf plot. So let's look at an example from our original, uh, the numbers you just worked with, and you made a frequency distribution chart with them. Um, here's our set of numbers, and uh, we can see that the numbers range from numbers that are in the 50s all the way up to uh, in the 90s, <coughs> and even a 100 is in there, right there. So my stems are going to consist of the first digit of each one of those numbers, uh, and they range from 5 to 10. These are my stems. Now I'm going to systematically go through and put each leaf next to its stem. For example, up here at 63, I'm just gonna put a three here next to the six. And then go down to 76, I'm gonna put a six next to the seven and an eight next to the eight. I'm gonna do that until I've gone through and recorded each one of these numbers. Then I go back and I put them in order. And here's the result of what we came up with. Uh, we can see that the numbers are definitely uh, higher, kind of here in the middle, and they seem to be skewing, uh, well, the hump, the majority of the numbers seem to be on the right, where we kind of have a skewed couple of scores out here that are skewing it to the left. <coughs> but with this, we have all of our original data, and at the same time, we can see how it's distributed we would probably put the middle of the data somewhere in the high 80s. I say high 80s because we also have a lot of numbers here in the 90s and fewer numbers to the left of 70, which means that if I were to average them out, it would pull it up to the higher uh, 80s level. Now, if sometimes we have too few stems and then a lot of leaves, um, in this, we actually had quite a few peop, uh, f quite a few numbers fall into those last couple columns. So if we end up with a lot of leaf and not enough stem, our choice is to really break up our stems. And when, because of the nature of uh, individual numbers like we have, we can only really break them up into two or fives because there's ten digits, and ten is only divisible by two and five. So in this divided stem and leaf plot, I've taken five and broken it up into two fives. So this first one would represent 50 all the way up to 54. 50 being the first, 51, 52, 53, 54 being the fifth number in that column. And then the next, col uh, the next row here would be 55 through 59. And if you count that, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, that actually has a, the same width. There's five possible numbers that could fall into the second one. And we do that for each of my numbers. You can see this spreads it out a little bit. 
and gives us a little more of a different picture of our data. <coughs> Another type of graph uh, that's used a lot is a time plot. Many variables are measured as intervals over time. And to display the behavior of a variable over time, we make a time plot. In a time plot, the time is placed on the horizontal axis. The variable that's being measured is put, of course, on the y-axis. <coughs> when we look at a time plot, we're connecting the data points at certain intervals to emphasize the change over time. A great example of this would be if you look in the newspaper at, say, the Dow Industrial, Indust <laughs> Dow Industrial Average over time. Usually it's over a 24 or a 12 hour period or 8 hour, hour period, whatever, however long uh, that particular trading day was. And what we see with this time plot is that um, we, we're basically seeing the pattern of what happened over that day. Every 10 minutes or every 5 minutes the value of the Dow Industrials is recorded and it's plotted as to its height and time on the x and y axis. As we look at across that time period, we're able to see the trends of that particular uh, average over time. What we're looking for is trends and cycles in the patterns. Um, and it may not necessarily be over a 24-hour period. You may want to look at it over a year's period of time. But that's the typical thing that we're looking for in a time plot to discover. The Dow Jones Industrial Average will fluctuate throughout the day, but will the overall trend throughout the day, the week, the month, or the quarter? Those are all different things we may want to look at. This pretty much concludes uh, the second part of 1-1. You can now proceed to uh, read through the book if you haven't already done so, and then begin to work on some of the homework problems uh, associated with this section. Thank you.